Janie here again. I hope I find you all well this week. Um, can't believe where the weeks are going. We're now into part six of the Fruit Garden Crochet Along and you can head over to the Starcraft website now and find the patterns free to download. Um, this time round you're going to be working on a piece called Dianthus, which is this one. This is going to be the corner piece of your project. Um, it's not massively complicated, I, I, well I don't think it is, but it has got this framework at the back of the motif um, and this following video will show you how to work through that if you're struggling a little bit following the patterns. So you're going to make four of those, that's the Life DK and Batik one and that is the Naturals one, the Bamboo and Cotton um, and as I said you make four of them and they make the corner motifs for the blanket. Um, it's been really lovely seeing your central panels all made up over the last week or so. Um, I hope that has sort of spurred you on. I know some of you did not enjoy doing the, the border with the two colours. Um, I really love it. I like doing a bit of colour work but I know some of you found it hard so I hope you'll forgive me for that. Um, and the other thing you're going to do this time round is put some more leaves onto your acanthus um, blocks. I know in my videos I um, muddle up leaves and petals quite a lot so that has happened again in this set of videos so I hope you'll forgive me for that as well um, but you're going to make these sets of leaves here that sit behind the pieces you've already done. Um, there's only three little rows to do on that, you're going to make the central stem of each of these leaves then you're going to make these central ones here, they've gone a bit curly, so you're going to make these two and then you make this other one at the back here with these little, these are made from clusters. Um, so just three rows to do, you do three at the top and then you turn it and do the three again at the other side, it really is quite curly. Um, don't panic if yours is looking curly like mine, that's how it will look. Um, and you've got to make eight of those haven't you so um, in the forthcoming video I talk you through that step by step and as I said you make the dianthus motif as well so I hope you're all enjoying the crochet along still and I hope it's keeping you going at this difficult time I know lots of people are in very difficult situations and um, I think sometimes having your craft and having your love of crochet kind of helps you through difficult times. So I'm sending you all lots of love and hope you're all getting on okay. And I look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks time when we will be on set seven. So we're nearly there. We're three quarters of the way through the crochet along. And as I say, keep well and I'll see you soon. When I was designing the crochet along project, this is actually the layout of an embroidery that Mae Morris did that I based my design on. And you'll see that at the corner here, um, Mae has used a five leaf flower um, as her corner moti <laughs> motif, if you like. And this was something that she did a lot. She used these stylized flowers at the corner of a lot of her work. Here is another example here in the book that I've got of another five petaled flower. Um, so when I was looking at designing this motif I really wanted to emulate this flower in my crochet um, but it actually got beyond difficult trying to make this stem and the five petals. So I actually then, you can just see it in the shot there, I actually then looked at this flower here which is in another one of her embroideries and that's the one that I used to base this motif on. Um, so if you have got any of um, May's embroidery books or you want to have a look online, have a look to see that, that kind of corner flower that I'm talking about. And um, maybe if you, you flick through, you'll see where I got the inspiration for this motif from as well. Anyway, you've got to make four of these and I'm going to talk you through it over the next few minutes. So over the next 10 minutes or so I'm going to talk you through working the framework at the back of the dianthus motif. You can't really see all that much at the front but when you turn the motif over you can see that there's this chain framework at the back. Um, this is the bamboo and cotton version which has the night in between the petals and if I turn the corner of the blanket over 
um, you'll see that's what it looks like on the um, Life DK and Batik version. So you've got quite a lot going on here at the back that you can't really see at the front. Um, but I actually really like the way this um, dark colour comes through and gives the petals that definition. So um, obviously it's also there to allow you to make the framework later on. So I'm going to talk you through that just simply because you're kind of going from row to row or round to round when you make that framework. So I'm going to show you that and then we'll head on to the acanthus motif. This is the motif at the end of round five. Um, at this point you do need to measure it, so just make sure you've got the right measurement there. Um, I haven't shown you how to do most of this because I think it's all things that you've covered before. You've got the same ring at the centre of this motif that you have had in all your motifs so far, I think. Then you've got some little clusters that are made by working treble three together, or if you're in US terms, that's double crochet three together. Um, and then you've created these kind of petals out of, again, clusters here at the top here. This is a three, treble three together. Then you've got a treble, a, sorry, a double treble three together in the middle and a treble three together again, either side with the chain spaces in between. So just make sure that those have all lined up when you work these clusters, you're going to do one incomplete stitch into the first stitch and two incomplete stitches into the second. So the same with that middle one, one into the first stitch and two into the second, and then they make one stitch at the top. So that's what your motif should look like at the end of round five. At the back, I've sewn in all my ends at this point just to make things a bit clearer. And I'm going to join my yarn in um, to the stitch down here that is at the top of that. If you look there, there's the double treble, sorry, the treble three together is there. Then we've got a chain space there, little tiny one chain space. That is where I'm going to join my yarn in. So I'm flipping the petals forward and finding that chain space, which for me is there. I'm going to join my yarn in and do one double crochet into there. Bring my tail out. Okay, so when you look at the front there, you can just see that little bit of colour for the stitch. Then I'm going to do five chain. Let's get that tail out of the way. One two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to find the next one behind that next petal. So I'm flipping that forward and with the kind of hook part of my hook, find that next skip chain space there. So I've made a five chain space at the back there. So I'm going to do that another uh, seven times. Well, no, it's six times. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, push forwards, find the next one. And I'm going to do that all the way round until I get to the last one. And I'm going to show you what's different about the last one when I get there in a minute. So you can see one double crochet and a chain space, one double crochet. But when you get to the last one, it's different. I'm at the end of that round, more or less. I've more or less done it all. I've got eight DCs sitting between those petals. And at the back, I've got seven chain spaces. I'm just about to make the last one. And this is slightly different. It's I think we've met this in, a, in another um, motif already. Instead of making a five chain space, what I'm doing here is I'm going to do two chain, one, two, and then I'm going to do a treble into the first DC at the beginning of the round there, so that I'm creating one of those chain spaces that isn't actually a true if you like a true chain space, but my hook is left at the centre of that chain space. So when I look at that from the back, let's just turn that over and ignore my tail, you should see that you've got eight, you've still got eight chain spaces, there they are at the back of the work, but that your hook is sitting at the centre of that last one. So I'm on round seven and I start off by making six chain. And this counts as a treble, so the first three are the treble, 
and three chain. So there's my six chain at the beginning of the round. And then what I'm going to do now is find that next chain space that was made back here on that batik row where I used the rows batik. And I'm going to do one double crochet. So I'm just going behind there again, one double crochet into that chain space. So I've created my first loop and done a double crochet between that same, this is the petal that I was behind and it's just here between that petal and the next one. So there it is there, one double crochet. Then I'm going to do three chain, one, two, three, and then I'm going to do a treble into the chain space that I made on the previous round. So you pull up that chain space and do a treble into there. Okay, so that's one DC into the existing flower, three chain and a treble. That's a US double. Then I'm doing three chain, two, three, and then I'm finding that next skipped chain between that petal and the next one. So just slip that forward and find that slip stitch. Skip, sorry, skip chain space. So can you see there that I've created two chain spaces behind one petal? I'm going to do that again. So it's three chain, one, two, three, a treble into that new chain space that we made on the previous round. Like that. Three chain, one, two, three, and a double into that skipped chain space. So when I turn that over, you should see that behind each petal, I've now got two chain spaces with a treble in between, right slap bang in the middle of the petal and a double crochet into that rose row round. Okay, so I'm gonna do that all the way round um, until I've got all my chain spaces. So in theory, I should have 16 chain spaces and I'll show you the next round. I'm at the end of round seven and I just thought I'd show you that ending because you do something a little bit different here in that you join into the chain at the beginning of the round. So I've done my final three chain to make my final chain space and I'm gonna count up the three chain of that six chain that was made at the beginning and put my hook into the third chain up to complete the round so that I've now got 16 um, chain spaces. So just check that your back looks like mine in that you've got the trebles behind the leaves, the petals, sorry, and the stitches in between the petals. So you should have your second round. You see how that's beginning to look like a proper framework now. Um, and I'm going to show you the next round, which is round eight. So we're staying in this same colour. Oh, what have I done there? Let's put that at the back there. Okay, I'm going to give my yarn a pull. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to do a double crochet first. So to get to the height of the double crochet, I do one chain. And then I do one double crochet into that same chain at the base of that stitch. So that's the third, it's the third chain up of that sixth chain at the beginning. Then I'm going to do three chain, one, two, three. And then I'm finding that two chain space between the two sets of petals. So this is the, the petal I'm behind. This is the next one. So that's the chain space that I'm looking for here. So I'm going to do three double crochet into that chain space. So that's three single crochet in US terms. So that's three there into there. Then I'm going to do three chain. And then I'm going to find the treble that was made at the back of that next petal. There it is there. And I'm doing one double crochet in to the top of that stitch. So again, we're creating two chain spaces behind each of those petal groups. So one, two, three. Then I'm going to find that next two chain space that is after that next petal there. So it's here for me and I'm doing three double crochet, one, two, three, into that chain space. And I'm going to do that all the way round. So it's three chain, one, two, three, a double crochet into the top of that treble, 
that you made on the previous round like that one oh one oh dear why does it do that sometimes one two three and then three double crochet into that next chain space okay so that's what starts to really pull those petals apart is the three double crochet or three single us um, that pull those petals apart there okay so i'm going to do that all the way around here i am then at the end of round eight and i've made my framework it's a bit like a i like it it's a bit like a spider's web isn't it I really like that at the back actually it makes me another one of those silly things that makes me really happy but I really like the back but obviously the back is not the point of the flower but um, just make sure that you've got all your chain spaces in and that you've got three double crochet between each petal and you should be able to see that that then has started to separate those petals really nicely and that you just get this dark color kind of sitting between them you will feel that it's quite um, quite thick at that point because we've made kind of like a double layered flower so it is a bit chunkier than the others um, but don't let that put you off I think it's a really nice um, motif so that's it done in the life DK and batik yarns and just to show you that with the bamboo and cotton that's what it should look like at the back well I've got more on there but that's what it should look like at the back of the um, naturals version you should just be able to see this dark blue this night shade coming through the petals and what we're going to do now is we're going to use our background color so dusk on this one and caramel on the other one to create the framework now around um, that flower motif I'm on round nine and I'm going to be using caramel for recipe one if you're on recipe two then you'll be using uh, dusk which is the lighter blue bluey grey of the two shades um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to join my yarn into the chain space that was made before this central cluster of my chosen petal I'm going to join my yarn in and work four double crochet into that chain space and then I'm going to do a double crochet two together across two chain spaces and then another four double crochet into this chain space so I'm going to show you that now. I'm going to join in by working one chain. That's the usual. And then do four double crochet. So that's four single into that same chain space. So that's my four. One, two, three, four. Pull out the tail. And then I'm going to do a double crochet two together over this chain space and the next chain space. So to do that, I put my hook into the same chain space and pull up a yarn loop. Don't over pull it, just keep it to your normal tension. And then go into the next chain space and pull up another loop. There we go. And then use your yarn to draw through those loops to create just one stitch at the top there. And that really makes a point of that um, cluster there. So then we're going to do four double crochet into that same chain space, two, three, four. So those are all worked into the um, chain spaces that I made using parchment. But I'm now going to work into the stitches that were made on that previous round in the cranberry. So I'm going to do one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So those are the three that sit between the petals like that. And then I'm going to draw up, pick up that next chain space made right back here on, I think, round five, isn't it, that we made the parchment petals. So it's four double crochet, one, two, three, and four into that chain space, two together, so one into the same chain space, one into the next chain space. There's my two together four into that same chain space and one double crochet into each of the next three stitches that were made on the previous round. I'm just having to use my hook a little bit to do that. One, two, three. So on that round, as you can see there, 
I've worked into chain spaces made on round five parchment and the three stitches between that were made on that previous round. And what's happened is that that just sits, your chain um, framework that you've previously made just sits back down behind that petal. Okay, so I'm going to do that all the way round. Here I am at the end of round 10 and I've filled in all my chain spaces and done my double crochet between the petals and I should have a stitch count of 96 stitches. You are also asked to measure at this point so as I keep saying just keep checking your measurements as you go along and on this next round which is round 10 we're going to start to create the four corners of the motif so when you look at your motif here we've got eight petals and we're going to make four corners so we're going to make one of the corners on this next petal which is the first one then we're going to kind of skip this middle one and make another corner here so then we're going to skip this one and make another corner here and so on all the way around until you've got four corners so the first thing to do is to do a one chain that just gets you to the height of the round and one double crochet into that next stitch then I'm going to do three chain I'm going to do a treble into the top of that double crochet two together that we made here at the centre of that petal. So I'm doing a treble into there. Okay, then it's like we've done all on, on all the other motifs. You're going to do that three chain and another treble into that same place to create your corner chain space. Then it's three chain and then you're going to skip two stitches one two and go into each of the next five stitches so one two the first two there belong to the petal then because it's five I'm going to do the next three one two and three and that gets me to the next petal you can see I've used those three stitches that were made there and there's my corner Okay, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a chain behind this, I'm just getting my yarn up, a chain behind this next petal and it is a chain I think of seven stitches, of seven chain. Let me just check my pattern, uh, seven chain, so one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And I'm skipping this whole petal so that my first stitch is the first of those three double crochet there between the petals. So I'm doing one, two, three along those three stitches that were there anyway. And then the next two to make my 5DC go along onto that next petal. So when you look at it like that, I've got a corner that I've made here, I've got five double crochet, I've made seven chain to go behind that next petal, then I've done five double crochet, and so I'm ready to make another corner. So it's three chain, one treble into that DC2 together, three chain, one treble into that same stitch and three chain and then I'm going to skip two stitches and do five double crochet so two of those belong to the petal and the next three are the stitches between the petals so there we go you can see I've made my next corner so I'm going to do that all the way around I'm going to have four corners and four places where I've done seven chain behind that petal. Okay, and I'm going to show you that at the end of the round. I'm at the end of round 10 and I'm just making sure that I've got four corners and four skipped petals so that I've got the seven chain spaces there behind four of the petals. So just check that yours looks like mine at that point and I'm now going to show you the next round so we start by doing 
one chain. So this is round 11. I'm going to do one chain and then I'm going to do three double crochet into that next chain space. Okay, so I've reached my corner chain space now and I'm going to do five double crochet into there. One, two, three, four, five. And so that's my new corner. And I'm then going to do three double crochet into that next chain space. Okay, so there's my first corner. So then I'm going to do one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. And in some cases you've actually got used to missing that first stitch, haven't you, when you've been doing corners. But you're not going to do that this time, so you're going to find the very first stitch of those, that group of five, and do one, two, three, four, and five. So there's the five. And then you're going to do seven chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you're going to skip that next petal again. So you're going to go behind that next petal, so you're putting your next chain space there, look on top of the one you've already made, and you're going to do one double crochet into each of those next five. Okay, and you'll see that what that's done is it's allowed that petal to still say, stay proud of the square so that it sits out a bit. So it was three double crochet into the first chain space, five into the next chain space, and three into the next chain space. Then it was one double crochet into the, each of the next five, and seven chain behind that next petal five double crochet and the next thing I will be doing is three doubles into this next corner. So it'll be three into there, five into there, three into there. So I'm going to do that all the way round and I will show you the motif at the end of the round. So this is my motif at the end of round 11 and I've got four corners hopefully and I've got new chain spaces now behind the petals. So I've got two there now behind each petal, each of those central groups of petals. So now I'm going to do the next round and this one will pull that up into place, those, those missed petals um, at the center there. So the first thing I'm going to do is one double crochet, uh, one chain, sorry. And then I'm going to do one double crochet into each of the next four stitches, two, three, and four and that gets me to the corner the central one at the corner and I'm going to do that corner that we've done before which is a half treble a treble and a half treble okay so that creates the nice smart corner then I'm going to do one double crochet into each of the next ten stitches so one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the first five of those stitches were along where we had chain spaces previously, and the second five are in line with those DCs that you've already done. So I've now reached the point where I've got my chain spaces. So I'm going to do two double crochets over both of those sets of chain. So I'm going to put my hook under the first one that we made right down two rows before, two rounds before, and do one double crochet into there. So I'm kind of drawing the yarn up and going over the top of those chain spaces and doing two double crochet. And they sit to the right side of that chain space, those two chain spaces. So then... I'm then going to skip some stitches on here and I'm looking for the chains that at the top of the stitches that look like they're central to that cluster. So there'll be one before there, so I've taken my yarn through there, and there's one after and I bring my yarn through that as well. And I do a DC2 together at that point, so that's my central point at the top of that cluster. And I'm going to show you that again. Oops. So I've done 
two double crochet into the pair of chain spaces then I've skipped one, two, three, four stitches and I'm going to put my hook into the next one and the next one and do a DC2 together. Okay. Then I'm going to find those two chain spaces that are now sitting at the back there and do two double crochet into there so that that is now accounted for and then I'm going to do one double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches and that will get me up to my next corner. Okay, so two into there. Then I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, and ten. And then I'm ready, I'm at the central point now there to make that next corner. Okay, so that's what that should look like at that point. You've drawn this petal up to sit just over the top of the work you've already done so that you get that nice clear petal at the top there. Okay, so again you're going to do that all the way round. I'm working along my final side and I just thought I'd show you that bit behind the petal again because I've realised that maybe there's something you could do there that's not quite right. So I'm going to do two double crochet into those pair of chain spaces there and then when you do the double crochet two together at the top of this petal here you are not going to go through the chain space as well at the same time you're going to do that completely separately so you're not going into there and through the chain space like that so you've got everything over your hook you're just dealing with that on its own so that you're just going into those stitches at the top of the petal nothing else and doing your DC2 together and then you go back down and go over those chain spaces okay so you're not catching up that chain space at that central point you can see they still sit separately behind the petals okay so then I'm just going to finish off my double crochet here to finish that round There we go, and I'm just going to do my slip stitch. So that's what your motif should look like at the end of that round. You should see that you've got your nice four corners. Let me take my hook out so I can show you. You've got your four corners, and then this bit should retain the shape of that flower so it pulls out, um, and you're ready then to do your next round. There's nothing unusual about the next round, so I don't really feel I need to show you that one. Um, so I'm going to pop that down, I'm going to finish my final round off camera and then I'm going to start talking you through the um, steps for the acanthus motif. So you need to make four of these. Um, yeah, so well done. So we're returning to our acanthus motifs that we've already made um, over the last few patterns. You should have got to this point where you've got your leaves in place and um, your central flower is complete. So you should have those six leaves done. Um, just make sure before you start, oh I've got my ends left in there but that's fine. So before you start just check that you have got your stitch markers left in at the back of those leaves. That's the two central leaves there and what you've done is you've put a marker into the skipped chain at the top of that leaf and the reason it's got a marker in is because on the next couple of rounds you're actually going to use that stitch to hold it down into place. So I know this has been a really daunting motif but I do hope that by breaking it down into pieces we have made it a little bit easier. What you're going to do over today's patterns or this set of patterns is you're going to create these central leaves here. So you're going to make this one here with a stem in umber and same the other side and then you're going to create the three leaves there at the middle and also these that have the three kind of smaller leaves on. What happens here is that that comes across, joins onto the stem that you've previously made here 
makes that central leaf and then comes back to this other side. So you're working in rows and you're actually going to do three rows, that's all it is. One to make the stems, two to make these central leaves here, these two, and three to make these three sets of leaves at the back there. I hope that made sense. I'm kind of trying to calm you down and keep you calm about it. Um, just take it slowly. It's it's easier than you think it's going to be. And I'm going to talk you through it over the next um, 10 minutes or so. So um, I hope you'll stick with me. I'm doing recipe one, so I'm going to use graphite. If you're doing recipe two, then at this point you're going to use umber. And I'm going to find that chain loop that was made at the back of that leaf previously. So you're looking for the chain loop that you made there. And you're going to join your yarn into there by working one chain and one double crochet. There we go. Simple as that. So we're in. We're off. We're off the starting blocks. The next thing to do is make 12 chain. So one, two, three, four. Oops, that's just getting in your way, isn't it? Let me hold that down. That was um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, eleven. 12 okay so just 12 chain and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work back along that chain to make 11 stitches if you can hear a sort of scraping noise it's my um, stitch markers banging on the table so I'm going to come back along this chain and do double crochet that's US single all the way down that chain so that I've got 11 stitches two I think that was three actually oh. So I'm just doing one double crochet into each of those chain so that I get this kind of curly stem that I'm going to use to make the next leaf. So I've got a couple left to do. always find this tricky working back into the foundation chain. Here we go, I've got one more after this one. There we go, so you should have 11 stitches. And you'll see already that that's doing a nice good bit of curling. Don't worry about that. That's what it that's what it will do. So then I'm going to do a double crochet into that same chain space. There we go. So I'm in. And then I'm going to do three chain and another double crochet into that chain space like that. And then I'm going to make another stem. So I'm going to do 12 chain again. Ten, eleven, twelve, and then work back along those to make another stem. So at the end of that row, I've got two stems. Ignore my tails there. I've got two stems. They will be curly. As I said already, they'll love to curl. So I did one double crochet at the beginning and twelve chain. Then I work back along those twelve chain to get eleven stitches and did one double crochet into that same loop at the bottom. Then I did three chain and repeated the process again. So I did one double crochet into the chain space. I made 12 chain. Then I came back down the 12 chain and did 11 stitches, obviously skipping the first one. And then I finished by doing one double crochet into that same chain loop. So that's it, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? What you're gonna do then is once you've done that one, is you're going to turn your motif and do the same thing into this chain space opposite. So now I'm at the beginning of short row two and what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down into really small pieces to try and help you through it because it repeats some of the things that you did here. The petals, um, sorry, the leaves are made in a similar way um, but we'll just break it right down and do it slowly. So I'm using blue haze and if you're doing recipe two, then you'll be using thyme, which is the darker of the two greens. And I'm going to join my yarn into that same chain loop before the first stitch from the previous round. So I'm just going to draw my yarn through, make a chain, 
and do one double crochet into that same chain loop there. Okay, pull my tail in through. So now I'm going to do a series of slip stitches. These just get me to where I want to be and create the bottom side of the leaf. So I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch and that's the double crochet at the base of that stem. So I'm going to just, oh I've just caught it slightly. Slip stitch into there and then I'm going to slip stitch into the 11 remaining sides of that foundation chain. So you should be able to find, and I think we've done this before as well, you should be able to find the leftover part of that foundation chain. Yes, of course you've done it. You've done, an, done it on all your leaves, haven't you? So you're going to find that and do a slip stitch into there. Use the hook part of your hook to find those slipped chain. And you're going to do that along each of the 11 stitches along that side of the stem. Okay, so you're going to do that all the way up so that you've got 11 slip stitches plus the one that you made into the double crochet at the bottom. So when we get to the top here, we're not going to do one into the skipped chain at the top. We're going to stop there at the base of that last stitch. So that's what your work should look like at that point. So now I'm going to make the first tip of this leaf and I'm going to do it by doing three chain and then I'm going to do treble two together into the skipped chain at the top of that stem. So treble two together into there and you'll notice in the pattern that we've broken it down into pieces because it just looked so long on the piece of paper that we thought it wasn't very fair to you. So we thought that by putting gaps in the pattern it would help you to follow it more easily. So, so here I am, I've done three chain and treble two together which I'm just about to finish there. Then I'm going to do three chain and make a picot by going into the top of there. So there's my cluster and my picot there. And then I'm going to do three chain, one, two, three, and I'm going to do a slip stitch into that same chain at the base there. And that has made my first leaf tip. It's a very dark colour, so it's not that easy to see, um, but hopefully you've followed that. It's three chain up, treble two together into the skipped chain, make a picot, do three chain and then slip stitch back down into that same skipped chain at the top of the leaf. Sorry, the top of the stem. So that's one petal complete and I'm now going to make the next one. So this is very similar to what you did when you made the spear, this second part here of that spear leaf before. So I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch and it's a proper stitch so I'm just going to use my hook to find that first stitch and slip stitch into there. So I'm now working along the stitches at the top of that stem. Just tidy up a bit by moving that tail end a little bit. Okay, and get that clear there. Okay, so then I'm going to make six chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm going to skip three chain and go down here. One, two, three. Go down here. Did I do six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I did. Because it's, it's dark, I can't see all that well. So there we go. That makes my little pico there. And then I'm going to do another treble into the same stitch so that that is the equivalent of two trebles into that stitch there. Okay. Then I'm going to do one treble into the next stitch a half treble and a double into the next stitch and a slip stitch into the next stitch. So there is my next leaf. So what I did is I did six chain, skipped three and came back and made the picot. I did a treble into the same stitch, a treble into the next stitch, a half treble and a double into the next stitch and a slip stitch into the next stitch. Okay, you might want to draw out, like I showed you before, that little shorthand to do that, 
but it's very similar to what you did on this leaf. So I'm going to do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Skip three and make my picot. There we go, there's my picot. One treble into the same stitch. So that's the equivalent of two trebles. One treble into the next stitch. A half treble and a double into the next stitch. There we go, there's my second one. So I'm now going to work along those remaining stitches. I should have five of them. And I'm going to do a double crochet into each of those five stitches. Two, three, four, and five. And that gets me to the end of the stem. You should have this nice curly leaf happening now. By doing the slip stitches along the bottom, because slip stitches are tighter, it, it starts to give that curl to the leaf. So if you're looking at it thinking, oh, that is curly, it should be like that. That's part of it. And you should have three smaller parts to that leaf stem. OK, so then you're going to skip this final stitch and just do one double crochet into that chain space. That's the three chain space that we made on the previous round. And now I'm going to um, go into this skipped chain here. OK, so it's the one at the top of that spear-like leaf. Just make sure you can see it. This is a little bit fiddly. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put my hook into that skipped chain before I take the stitch marker out. So you can see I'm in there. I'm going to take my stitch marker out like that. So I've got it and I'm going to do one double crochet into that skipped chain. So I've caught that leaf down and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make the stem for my next central leaf. So I'm going to make nine chain here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So this is going to be the central stem and I'm going to work back down that using double crochet to make eight stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, this is number seven, oh, and eight. Okay, and I've reached the chain space that same three chain space that was made in graphite and I'm going to do one double crochet into there and that then means that what we've done here is into that chain space we did a double crochet and then we did a double crochet into the skipped chain at the top of this leaf so you can see those are now attached there then I did nine chain and work back along that to make eight stitches and then one double crochet into the base um, chain space at the bottom there. That's that same chain space. So what I'm going to do now is work along the next side of this, um, the side of this next stem, and it's a reverse of what you've done here. So I don't feel like I need to show that to you. I'm going to show it to you at the end when I'm done when I've done it. But you obviously I'm trying to make sure it looks the same as this one. At the end of short row two, this is what you should have. You should have one leaf there with the three kind of points to it. You should have a central leaf stem that has joined in that skipped chain on that one, that on that leaf. And then you should have the mirror image here of this one with another leaf. Okay, and you've worked back along that side with the slip stitches and that's given the leaf that lovely curl. And then you're going to repeat that on the other side of the motif down here. So that's what it should look like. Don't worry if it's, it looks a bit like a bat or something, doesn't it, at that point. Don't worry if it's all curly, it'll calm down once we do um, the subsequent rounds later on. So um, good luck with that. Just make sure you take your time and um, keep your counts. Do a little drawing if you need to. 
and um, just repeat that on the other side of the motif as I said. So you're about to start your final short row for this set of patterns and this is actually my pro one of my prototype pieces and I just wanted to explain to you before I show you this row actually what you're doing. What you're going to do is you're going to make a series of three leaves or like um, cluster, they're clusters actually. So you're going to start at the top of this leaf and make one big cluster which is this one. You're then going to make a free range one that just sits on its own here and then you make your third one into the central stitch of that group of stitches there and that will give you three kind of rounded leaves that have been made out of your clusters. You're then going to do some chain and that sits behind there, look, can you see that's behind that leaf that we've previously made and then you're going to work up the centre the side of that central stem that we've just made on the previous short row. So you're going to make your spear like leaf again like you did here when you made this one. You're going to come back down and you're going to do some chain again which will sit behind that next leaf there you see it and then you're going to make your final set of three leaves so you're going to do one set of cluster stitches into that central stitch then you're going to make a kind of free range cluster on its own and then you make the final set of clusters cluster stitches into the top of that leaf there okay so it sounds pretty pretty straightforward doesn't it um, I hope it does. You're going to make this set of three, a chain behind, this central leaf, a chain behind and then this set of three. And guys once you've done that you're really on the home straight with this piece. I know it's been hard, I know it's a difficult piece to do but you're going to feel so proud once you've done it and I'm going to talk you through that short row, the final short row of this set of patterns next. So I'm joining my yarn into this first leaf, the rounded leaf that sits before the central spear like one. And I'm going to join my yarn into the central stitch of the three stitches at the top there. So it's that one. For me it's that one there. And I'm going to do one chain to join, catch my tail in, oops, and do three more chain. One, two, three. So that's a four chain to join really. And then I'm going to make my first little leaf by doing a double treble, two together, into that same stitch. So I've put my yarn in the hook twice. I draw through to the last point where I haven't actually finished, like that. And then I do the same thing again, into that same stitch. So that I've got the equivalent of three stitches on my hook. Then I'm going to catch the yarn and go through all three loops and that makes my first very straightforward leaf. I'm just pulling my yarn just so I can show you that. So there's my first leaf, okay? So that one was pretty straightforward. I hope you'll think it was anyway. So for the next one, I'm gonna do five chain this time, not four. So one, two, three, four, whoops, five. And then I'm gonna do another double treble into that fifth chain from the hook so it's there so that's the one that's leading out of the cluster that we previously made and I'm just going to do a double treble there and that is the first part of the next leaf I'm going to do one chain and then I'm going to do a slip stitch into the base of that chain there it's a bit tricky you have to pull it over but doing that one little chain a tiny tiny little pico there by doing that it gives you the tip of that next leaf and then I'm going to do four chain one two three four and I'm going to slip stitch into that same chain at the base of that one so there's my next little leaf okay so it was five chain up, sorry it was four chain up, was it four or five, I've got lost now, five chain, one double treble into the fifth chain, 
then you do one chain and make this little pico at the top and then you do your chain and come back down into that same stitch at the bottom so if you look at it like that now you can see that I've got two little leaves there okay so I now need to make my final one and this final one is going to be made into the central stitch of this three stitch group and it's a double treble three together so it's yarn on the hook twice go into that stitch do one step of the double treble two steps of the double treble and three steps so that I've got three incomplete stitches and then draw through everything and that's the point at which I now have three little leaves. So I've completed my three leaves and I've done seven chain and then I've pushed that next leaf that we've just made on the previous short row push that forward and I've done a double crochet into the stitch that's before that central leaf. It's the first one that was made before we made that stem there. Okay, so that seven chain just sits behind that leaf there. And now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work up the side of this leaf stem. Okay, so it's similar to what we did down here. It's just that I've got a few more stitches beforehand. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I'm going to show it to you once I've done one side so that you can see the order of the stitches. So I've completed one side of the leaf here along that central stem. I did two slip stitches so I did a slip stitch into each of the next two stitches. Then I've done a double crochet into each of the next three stitches. I've done a half treble into the next one and a treble into each of the next two. So that's got me up to here. Then I've done three chain and made a pico to make that kind of point at the top of that leaf. And then I've done three chain and come back down into that same stitch to finish off that pointy leaf. So it's very, very similar to what you did down here on this one. So I'm now going to make the top of this leaf, the pointy one in the middle, and I'll talk you through that one as well. So here's the next one finished. What I did is I did three chain, then I did treble two together into the skipped chain at the top of that leaf stem, then I made my pico. So this is very similar to what you've done before, and so in fact it's exactly the same. You make your pico at the top and then you do your three chain and come back down and do a slip stitch into the stitch skipped chain at the top of that stem and then to start the next side I've done a slip stitch into that next stitch so I'm just going to work down this final side and do six chain one two three four five six I'm going to skip three and do my pico do my slip stitch to make the pico there we go there it is and do a treble into the same stitch Okay, so that's the exact, well not the exact replica, but that mirror image is what you've done over here. So then it's a treble into the next stitch, and a half treble into the next stitch. Then it's three double crochets, so this is a mirror image, but going back down the other way. in Double into each of the next three, and then a slip stitch, one and two into those final two. So there we have it, there we have the final middle leaf. The last bit you've got to do on that, it's lovely. And then you're going to do one double crochet into the next DC there. And then you're going to do your seven chain that will sit behind this next leaf. So I've done two, three, four, five, six and seven. Okay, so there's my seven chain. I go behind the leaf and the first incomplete, not incomplete, sorry, the first cluster we're going to make, we're now going to make the rounded leaves. The first one is going into the central stitch of those three. So I'm going to do double treble three together into that first one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, 
two and three. So there's my first cluster about to be and complete. So there's my first rounded leaf. So then I'm going to make the one that sits out on its own. So this is a case of doing five chain and one double treble back into that fifth chain. So that's just two stitches really, isn't it? It's your chain to go up and your, your one true stitch. Then you're going to do one chain and slip stitch at the base of that chain to make that tiny little pico. And I do find I have to kind of hold that open to make that little pico there. And then I'm doing four, is it four or five chain? I can never remember. Down. And I'm going to slip stitch into that same place there. And then that's made my second little leaf. And now I'm really on the home straight now because I'm just going to do my final little leaf now. And it's going to go into the top of this one here. And it's a double treble two together. One and two. And I finish that off. And then I'm going to do four chain. One, whoop, two, three, four. And I'm going to slip stitch down into that final stitch. That's the place where that two together was made. So there's my final one. Okay, so then I'm just going to fasten that off. Just do that off camera, sorry. Just pull that off. Bring it back to show you. So that when you look at that, you've got, here's my beginning over here. Let's move that out of the way. Here I am, I've made three little leaves, seven chain. Gone behind that leaf and made my central leaf there. Done seven chain. And then I've made that group of three again. Mine's a bit open there. Don't worry if yours looks like that. Mine is a little bit loose. Um, if it worries you, just go back and make that one again. Um, mine has got a little bit loose. I think it's because I was trying to read the pattern and do it at the same time and cuddle my camera, which is what I <laughs> have to work around the camera. So if it looks a bit like that open like mine, go back and maybe make it a bit tighter. Um, but that's what it should look like at the end of that short row. Again, don't worry if it's all gone curly. It will do that until you calm it down over the next few um, rounds over the next set of patterns so um, that's it for that instruction I hope you found that helpful it is a lot to deal with we've um, as I said by breaking the pattern down into pieces we hope we've made it a bit easier for you um, you might want to use that shorthand that I showed you previously I think I showed you that for set pattern set four so you might want to have a look at, little look at that um, but I hope you've enjoyed it and um, I look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks time um, when we do our final square motif which is called chrysanthemum and we get to finish pretty much the acanthus motifs. Um, so I'll see you then.